you do feel quite exposed, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you've just been told you've got cancer. It's not a commonly known cancer, so something like this would have been so helpful. Listen to people who were in the journey themselves and realise that you don't have to travel it alone. With each diagnosis of cancer, it's very confronting, so many unknowns. I knew nothing about esophageal cancer. If you've just been diagnosed or you're looking after someone, you're in for the ride of your life, but hang in there because you'll get through it. You do kind of panic that, you know, is it just me? Am I the only person that's going to experience this? From a carer's point of view, you have to listen and learn and be patient. I'm Janice. I'm a mum with three kids and six grandchildren. And I'm also a survivor of esophageal cancer. Hi, uh, I'm Alan Gibson and this is my wife Kate. 15 years ago, in 2006, I was diagnosed with stomach and esophageal cancer. Hi, I'm Bev, uh, Bev Wood, and this is Rebecca, <laughs> my gorgeous Rebecca. And we're here because in 2018, um, our wonderful husband and dad um, got diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Hi, my name's Drew, I'm 50 years old, I'm from Melbourne and I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer in May of 2020. Hopefully, hearing our stories as they go through the processes might help give a range of strategies for you to choose from. For me at 49, you know, I heard those dreaded three words, you've got cancer. You do have that immediate panic. I was terrified. Yeah, absolutely terrified. I actually thought they'd made a mistake. <laughs> you know, I, I said directly to my GP, you know, are you sure? You know, are you sure you're actually looking at the right chart? You know, like this doesn't happen to me. Richard was diagnosed in um, uh, around February 2018. You defer to Dr. Google, but you know, Dr. Google is not really a, a great friend <laughs> when you get um, that sort of diagnosis. He can lead you up the garden path, basically. You learn very quickly that, um, that you're, you're not invincible uh, and, you, um, and you, you're, you're pretty fragile, but, um, but you're more resilient than you think you are. While there's uh, moments that you think are, um, uh, are going to be too difficult, um, you get through them. I knew nothing about esophageal cancer, so it's scary. How sick will I get? How much pain will I be in? Will I be operated on? Will I just have treatment? Will I have to have the scary chemotherapy? It's, will I survive? It's, it's, a, it's a lonely and a scary time. I really didn't know anything about cancer. The only knowledge I had was what I saw on television or in a movie. It's not a commonly known cancer, so there wasn't a lot of um, information out there. So I just think something like this would have been so helpful to mm -hmm. watch and, and listen to people who were in the journey themselves and and realise that um, you don't have to travel it alone. I did the whole why me, why me, um, you know, in my head. And then, and then I also just sort of thought, well, Drew, really, why not you? You know, like, why does, why does anybody deserve a diagnosis of cancer, particularly esophageal cancer, more than, you know, you? We can be stronger than we think we are and that we learn the priorities of life. Very cliché to say, but you learn that life is those problems and you get through them and uh, you become, you appreciate your family and friends and the simpler things. It's a, it's a very um, It's almost an enriching part of your life, but I, it's not because it's, it's a horrible thing to experience and you, you don't want people to go through that, but it is, it is an enriching part of your life. I learnt that I have a great family. 
Um, <laughs> who help, help a lot. I mean, you take things for granted, um, uh, but um, when the chips get right down, um, your family get behind you very quickly and help, and you need it. You can't do anything to change it once you've got that diagnosis. You know, like now, now all you can concentrate on is what do I need to do to get rid of this? Do you have a lot of time that is a self-reflection, I guess, not so much loneliness, it's self-reflection time of how you're going to cope with this and, and getting yourself in that mindset of getting through. Oh, that has to be an internal process, supplemented by knowledge and friendship and just support. Um, you know, the cuddles and the cries with your partner. When it was made so clear to me that everybody's cancer diagnosis and situation is unique. Once I got my head around that and I didn't compare myself to any other, you know, cancer story that I had seen or heard, um, that really helped me because then it meant that I just had to focus on, on what I had ahead. His problem solving mechanism was to go inward and to deal with the emotion and, and to think it through, but he didn't need to talk it through and I suppose then you've got to respect that because we're all different that was going to work for him. The one thing that does work when you are in this lonely time of seeking knowledge and information and dealing with your emotions is to distract yourself. In that period of time I got stuck into my artwork. I'd garden, I found gardening is calming to me. Both those in, um, activities uh, help me being alone in my own thoughts, but distracts my thoughts from the cancer back to the things that I love. I had some friends that um, uh, offered a lot of advice um, and uh, a lot of it was uh, unhelpful. They mean the right thing, but um, you're better off getting the advice from the right place. We restricted who we spoke to at all, my husband and I. Um, we didn't tell our children for a while because we found that we wanted to tell them facts. I made a list. <laughs> I went through and I made a list of all of the people that I wanted them to hear it from me rather than them hearing it from, you know, sort of second hand. Um, so, and once I'd made that list and once I'd called my friends and let them know what was going on and what I was about to, you know, have to, what was ahead of me, um, I felt so incredibly, like, protected then and I knew that they were going to support me the whole way through it. Face your fears, write down your questions, experience whatever emotions you have to do, uh, share those emotions with the people that are the closest to you because you do need to uh, let it out and, and share. Don't Google, don't, don't uh, worry about what's happened in the past, what other people have experienced. Just look forward because you get through it and advancements and moving along all the time. So um, take time for yourself. Keep yourself distracted uh, and you'll get through it. It was just a sort of passing comment that was made by my GP and he said to me, look Drew, you've got a really tough six months ahead of you, yeah? But if you follow exactly as you're told, you know, whatever guidance and instructions and everything that you're given from your medical professionals, your medical specialist, um, just follow it to a T. You'll get through this. It's okay to be terrified. Yeah, it really is okay. You know, definitely, definitely don't think that you're alone. There are many, many of us out there that have, have been through this and as you can see, we get through. Yeah, just know that you're not alone. That you're not alone. Listen to what they tell you and follow it.